I mean, everyone's got an opinion. You know the old saying about opinions being like, can't say it, but um, that's fine. I mean, the fact that people will support me no matter what I've done is amazing. The fact that people are accepting me back into the band is absolutely amazing. Uh, and I'm sure there are people who hate the fact that I'm in the band because I'm a completely different singer than Howard. You don't like it, go listen to something else, man. Yeah, I think I was 22, 23, I was a kid. Um, definitely felt like a teenager back. Looking back, you know, the mindset of a teenager, definitely a young guy. Very much into the underground hardcore punk scene. When joined up with those guys, they were heavy hitters. You get Mike, who used to be in a band called Overcast. Uh, Adam, who was in a band called Aftershock. And they were sort of the, the heavy hitters in the underground, along with my band, Corinne, at the time. And getting together with those guys, first couple rehearsals was just awesome. I mean, you could just sense the energy uh, sort of a super group of sorts in the underground. Definitely our first couple of shows we played, I think the first show we opened up for In Flames. I don't even know who In Flames was at the time. Not much of a metal guy. Um, I ended up leaving before they even played, which was the stupidest thing I've ever done. Now that I'm a huge fan of them and know who they are. But that, that, that show was huge, but we played a good amount of shows where there was 10, 15 people there who had no idea you know, what we were doing or who we were. So for the first uh, half a year or so, we played a lot of small shows. I think for me, uh, probably some of the pressures started to enter in. Um, I think I sort of uh, was my own worst enemy mentally, fighting a bit of a depression at the time, uh, being a newlywed at such a young age as well, uh, and then just not knowing my instrument well. Uh, I'd lose my voice after three or four shows, just from improper use, not knowing how to maintain it, just really wet behind the ears as far as touring. Uh, and I think all of those elements combined just kind of uh, made me sort of run away from the whole situation, which no regrets for sure changed my life and I you know, wouldn't wish it any other way, but I was definitely going through a rough spot in 2000, 2003. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's funny. I can look back and laugh at it, but I wasn't. I was in a pretty rough spot back then. And for me not to even be able to face the band and just have to send out an email, you know I had to have been in a really rough spot. So proud of my boys for like picking it up, continuing on, and honestly when that started to happen it took a lot of my guilt away from me for leaving. You know, I think me leaving was one of the best things that ever happened to that band initially. And the fact that they did achieve that success, you know, of course, you know, I wanted that success for myself at some point, but on the whole, I'm just really happy for my friends. I've always supported them, just like They've supported me in my project, so. A good friendship is the foundation in this band, and that's why I'm back. I mean, that's essentially why. You know, because we're all good friends, we kept in touch, and opportunity arose, and here I am again. Well, I've known Howard since I was 15 years old. Uh, he was in a band called Driven, playing the underground circuit. The same circuit, as I mentioned before, with Aftershock and Overcast and my band Corinne. So yeah, I've always known him, but it more of sort of like an acquaintance on the scene as opposed to like my buddy, my friend. And I think through interviews in the press, you know, people tried to create sort of a, you know, a pissing contest between us, which is just ridiculous. Those guys are perfect gentlemen. And to this day, you know, there's a lot left unsaid and it's out of respect. And I love those guys for it, they're gentlemen. So whether it came to me or it came to the Howard situation, there's just some things you don't share with people. You just let it be what it is and you move on. I went incognito to a gig. They played in Providence at Lupo's Outbreak Hotel. I was like, I just gotta go see how Howard's doing this stuff. So I put a winter cap on with a hoodie and sort of got all incognito and went there and was really impressed. And I actually was like, I gotta go say what's up to the guys. And at that point, Mike D and I were still, the bass player and I were still not on the best terms ever, which he's my buddy now, everything's good, but he was kind of like, whoa, what are you doing here? So he kind of took off, saw the guys, congratulated them, and shook Howard's hand and said, you're doing a great job, man, good to see you, and left. You know, they asked me to rejoin the band prior to the auditions. They reached out and asked me, and uh, I was like, I don't think I'm the guy for the job. I don't know if I can live inside of somebody else's material and sing it with conviction. So my initial response was like, I don't think I can do this. And then. Some time passed and I read the official press release that they had in fact parted ways with Howard. Something about reading it and seeing it in print sort of hit home. It was like, okay, they're gonna hold auditions and someone else could 
easily step in and take this position. So I uh, <clears throat> called up Adam, who was one of my best friends, and said, hey man, um, you guys want to do an Elaborate's Breathing tour in the meantime? What, would you, what do you guys want to do? Because it was the 10-year anniversary of the album that year. And he said, you know, no, I mean, I think we really just want to find a new guy and move forward. My, uh, my gears started turning in my head, and I called management and said, hey man, can you guys put me on the list to try out for, uh, for Kill Switch? I want to give this a shot. At the very least, I knew if I didn't give it a shot, I would regret it. Whether or not I got the position was another thing. It was just for me, it's like, I've got to go and see how it feels to sing Howard's material, to live inside these songs and see how it feels with the guys. I was texted the press release by my buddy Nick, who's actually the bass player in my band, The Impartial Fall. And he said, hey, did they call you yet? And I was like, what? And I clicked on the link on my phone. I was like, whoa, they did it. Crazy. I'm sure there are people who hate the fact that I'm in the band because I'm a completely different singer than Howard. And I get that, but it's asinine, honestly. Like, you want Howard back, it's, it's not happening. Like, it's, so it's almost like, why ask the question? It seems rather disrespectful to both parties involved. And that's the thing that really gets me, is like, I'm all about respect. Howard's a great vocalist. I can't stand when people come up to me and, you know, oh, he, he sucks and this and that. It's like, no, he doesn't. He's a great vocalist. Maybe you don't like his style or his lyrics, fine but don't disrespect him in front of me. Everyone's got their opinion, but I don't want to hear it, <laughs> honestly. Nonsense, people. Stop that. Nonsense. <laughs>